Awesome. Oh, Gilbert's here. Three hours. Gilbert, come on in, but I got to take a break, dude. <laughs> Gilbert. Wonder what he's promoting yet another Caroline's appearance. I would imagine. Hmm. Does he travel on the road anymore? Or does he just? Gilbert does whatever you want him to do. You pay him. I don't know. I don't know if he uh, tours. What are you promoting this time? Come on. Get in here and plug. Yeah, because I enjoy doing the show. <laughs> you cut your hair short. You have hair. Why don't you grow it a little? Yeah, I know. One of the nice things on you is your hair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. What, you won't, you won't pay for a stylist? <laughs> I'm afraid I might actually look good for once in my life. Don't worry yeah. about that. <laughs> there he is, Gilbert Godfrey. I, I picture, like, in ten years, Gilbert will kill some woman because... He's as weird as Phil Spector. It seems to be the way to go. Because I know he's hiding behind the curtains somewhere in his apartment. Throwing around guns. Do you own a gun, Gilbert? Do I own curtains? <laughs> Bad question. I can see Gilbert, like, flipping out in ten years. You whore. You won't do me. Because he's angry at women. And... Right. I'll... He probably is holding guns to heads to get oral favors. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill Ronnie Spector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's something up with me, Gilbert. Were you talking about how weird Gilbert is? Like, who was it? Someone told me they saw you at Hollywood Squares. Gary. No, no, no. This was last night at the Comedy Central party. Oh, we got a report. You were at the Comedy Central party yeah. last night? And you had a knapsack with you? Yeah. And at the end of the party, you went over to the food table and you stuffed stuff into your knapsack? Oh. No, that, that's... I, I, I didn't. I stuffed it in my mouth. No, no, no. What? You took stuff home in the knapsack and no. I got it on real good authority. Yeah. From Gary. No, not <laughs> Gary. Who did we hear that from? Chauncey, right? Chauncey. Yeah. In fact, Chauncey be on the phone in a second. Chauncey said he showed up jamming food in there. Really, Gilbert? No. Have you got the knapsack here? Yeah, yeah. If you'd like to smell it. <laughs> yeah. Does it smell no. like mission hot dogs? Chauncey called and he says he swore he saw you stick yeah. stuff in your knapsack. Yeah. Are you just too embarrassed to admit it? No, I didn't put any stuff. There'd be too many people for me to put stuff in there. Oh, like you care. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. What'd they serve? Uh, oh, it did not nothing good. It would have been, ch it was like chicken wings. Oh, I see. Why I did you have a knapsack? I always carry that. <laughs> I don't know why. Because he doesn't carry a purse. Yeah. Chauncey. Hey, how, how's it going? Gilbert says you're lying. Oh, Gilbert. Tell the truth. Gilbert, where, were you, where were you last night? I, I was at that party, yes. And what time did you get there? Mm, you, know it's, you know it's a good party if Gilbert's there. Yeah, yes. Oh, well, you yeah, know what it, it was? It was, it was a, Gilbert I, I, got there. Well, Gilbert got there at the end of the party. And it, you would think by now Gilbert has some money. He's like an old man. He shuffles in with one of those backpacks on his back. Yeah, all right, that's cool. Yeah. And he goes, but he goes to each, there's like a long buffet. He takes food from every single tray, loads it up, and leaves. What does he load it into? Yes. The backpack. But How, what, what, you mean I just put <laughs> you chicken in? wings into a backpack? I, I watched the whole thing. Did, did I have a plastic bag with me? I just put it in Nap the backpack. Napkins, napkins. Oh, come on, Sean. In napkins. I, I viewed the <laughs> yeah, whole that, thing. That's going to hold chicken wings. <laughs> we, we, watched, we watched in wonder. Were these napkins made out of plastic? <laughs> so, so Chauncey, are you sure you saw Gilbert put chicken wings in his knapsack? It was, it was, more, it was lasagna. It was ziti. <laughs> How did you wings, get that in a knapsack? It was cheese. It was I, I, I don't think Gilbert. It. I don't think Gilbert would ruin his four dollar backpack. <laughs> You can't even eat the food when it's all mushy. Uh, all I know is I sat there and I was amazed by what I was thinking. Say, I swear to God, I saw Gilbert put I food in there. I swear to God in heaven. Wow. But did Christ? To Christ? And to the, and it came to the, the Son ended. of God and how he died on the cross. The thing ended at 10 o'clock. Gilbert came in at like quarter to 10. All right. Well, you know what? I guess there's a disagreement going on here. i got to take a break anyway. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, I swear to the mother of Christ. You <laughs> saw Gilbert put lasagna in a knapsack. And tuna fish. Chauncey does have a weird reality. Yeah. He, I've been the victim of his, I swear to God, I saw you do something. And I poured some Coca-Cola in there. Too. Yeah, because you needed something to drink with all that. Right. Mix the salad. <laughs> uh, Gilbert Goffrey tomorrow night at Caroline's, as I figured. In Manhattan for ticket reservation, 212-757-4100. A rare appearance for Gilbert. Do you tour Gilbert or is it, uh, you have to come to New York to see you on stage? No, I go out of town. He's going to Jersey. Oh, oh yeah. Camden <laughs> County College in Blackwood.
you do in the college, huh? <laughs> Ticketmaster.com. Oh, yeah, they love him there. The kids love him. Oh, with the kids. Yeah, he, he, he makes a lot of very now references. I'm a big hit with the kids. Yeah. It's going to be some Phil Spector material. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How about those Ronettes? Do you ever change your act for colleges? Do you try to uh, be more contemporary? Oh, yeah, I wear a Nehru jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk about go-go dancing. <laughs> you don't change your act for anybody. No. No. How, how long has it been since you've changed your act? Oh. Was that Hitler routine? <laughs> I still do Spiro Agnew. Do you? Oh, yeah. If the, if the kids can't get Ralph yeah. Cramden and Casablanca, screw them. Gilbert does an excellent Ghostbusters routine. <laughs> Screw these kids. And I still have my catchphrases like, here comes the judge. <laughs> but does the college know how dirty you work? You do work blue. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. No, I, know. I mean, you'll you, you even use the C word for a woman's <laughs> private parts right on stage. And he doesn't like the yeah, audience. I did that during... Um, the Go-Go's. Yeah, the Go-Go's. <laughs> you opened up for the Go-Go's and all the teenage girls got to hear the C yeah, word. Because they warned me. They said there's going to be kids and their parents in the audience. <laughs> that's all you have to do. All right, look, we have to take a break. And, Who's weirder, uh, Gilbert or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. <laughs> You're sure? I, I think so. I don't, I don't think Gilbert sleeps with kids. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he talks about Hello, it. Hello, Michael Jackson never put a ravioli in his knapsack, of course. <laughs> I'm putting a ravioli in my knapsack. Look, Chauncey, the police are searching my knapsack for ravioli. I was humiliated as the police emptied my knapsack. They searched my rectum and knapsack for ravioli. They spread my buttocks cheeks, searching for ravioli and chicken wings. I found ricotta cheese in my wallet. Sleep with me, ravioli. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. You're a very funny guy, but everyone needs a break from you. No one can take too much Gilbert. Yeah, you have to meet it out. A little bit of Gilbert is good. Um, we're going to uh, take a break. Gilbert will come back with us. We're going to do a little news for you. And you know who's calling in, Abe Hirschfield. Is that right again? Swear to God. He's out of jail, right? He's out of jail. You have something he wants to oh, say. Oh, that's great. Gilbert loves to talk to Abe. You love when Abe calls in. Yes. Yeah. We'll be back right after these words. Well, are you ready for a new movie about the Clinton crisis? Entertainment Weekly magazine is. They're calling it Intern Gate the Movie, and they've cast the fictitious film. How about James Brolin as Bill Clinton? Barbara Streisand as the First Lady, as Monica Lewinsky, EW suggests Shannon Doherty, and in a brilliant piece of casting, Howard Stern as Paula Jones. You're listening to a man who doesn't care about the rainforest, but would love to see Sting's wife noon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on our phone is a very distinguished gentleman, uh, Mr. Abe Hirschfield, who actually had to go to prison for a while. Why, why, why did he go to prison? For, for Didn't he try to rub somebody out or something? Didn't he try to kill his business partner? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Mr. Hirschfeld is out of jail now. You're out of jail, Mr. Hirschfeld? Yes, sir. All right. Did you kill your partner? Well, my partner died before they started. Before you could kill him? Against me. I see. So before he could, before you could, kill him, before you could kill him, he died on you. So it's bad right. timing. So why they, they, why so they, they, um, so they arrested me for a second killing. Why do they arrest someone for killing someone if, they, if you don't get a chance to kill them? It's wrong to even plot. Why? Such because a thing. the courts in New York are so crooked, <laughs> so corrupt, so lying. I see. That is unbelievable. I can't believe they lock people up for murder. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't wrong. But you claim you didn't do it, right? No, I never intended to, and I never thought of it. But right. you know, <laughs> well, what was the today evidence? we have bigger problems. Are we doing? And I think. I would like to discuss two of the first major problem out of the... How old a guy are you? I sent you. A answer me my questions though first. How old are you? I am 84. And Why feel, are you worth over... I feel like I'm 84 and feel now better than when I was 21 because I lost 50 pounds a diet that I invented. You can eat as much <laughs> as you want. No pills, no exercise, and you lose as much as you want. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. Right. <laughs> and then you're uh, Tell way you 19 By the way, Mr. Hirschfeld, I know you're a big supporter of Israel. You're a Jewish man. We have a top Jew here, too. Uh, he is, he's a rabbi, and he would like to offer a blessing before we speak. Okay. <laughs> 
You're worth like a billion dollars, right? Well, I, anybody that has to count how much he is worth has nothing. All right, but you're a very wealthy man. And yes, I have many, is, many millions. I know you, you, I, mean, I see you all over the place discussing plans to build the World Trade Center. You have a, you have a diet you invented. You, uh, what have is a, the, how did he lose 50 pounds eating anything he wanted? But, but the point is, why not just rest and relax? What? Well, you know, I know when I rest. I rest when I, in, in my grave. But until then, <laughs> I like to do good things for the public. I will rise from my grave and yeah. turn into a bed. So let me tell you. I will drink the blood with the living. Yeah, so now. I me... can only be killed with a stake in the heart. <laughs> yeah. I am one of the undead who rises from my coffin every night. <laughs> And then I turn into a bat or a wolf. Right. Sometimes I'll turn into a wolf. And yeah, then I will bite on the necks okay, so that so I'll drink the blood with a living. All right. Yes, we should. Yes, so, you see, let me start. Let me start with the first problem. The first problem is... Is the, the sunlight devices. can destroy the undead. Okay. The sunlight right, what is the first problem you want to tackle? I want to say, I want, the first problem is to stop the many divorces that we have now, and I'll tell you why. Are you a divorced man? No, I'm 60 years married, only because my... Because I my, my, kill my, <laughs> only Did you try to kill her? <laughs> I tried killing my wife several occasions, didn't work out, so I, so I tell you, remain married. So I will tell you how to have a good, happy marriage. All right. You know, this 10-year-old boy says to his mother, <laughs> how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day he says, how much do you weigh? And she says it's not polite to ask. Next day he says, why are you divorced? <laughs> And she says, you're too young, you'll get older, we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me all the answers. It says that she's, that she's 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in sex, she got an F. And that's the main cause of all divorces. How old was the boy? <laughs> the old boy was 10 years old. He's 10, and how old is his friend? You know, the, the these... friends were the same age. Wait a second. The, the mics aren't working at all here. Can you just do that again? Yes. Yeah. The 10 year old boy is asking his mother, How old are you? And she says, It's not polite to ask. Next day he says, How much do you weigh? And she says, Also, it's not polite to ask. Next day he says, Why are you too How many times can you get him to say this? He says, You're too young, you'll get older, we'll discuss it. Two days later, the boys are together, and he says, Boys, I found my mother's driver's license. And it gives me all the answers. It says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in fact, she got an F. And that is a major issue in marriages. When the wife has a well, I'm going to ask you, but I don't understand. Yeah, well, wait, wait, let me up, if you have a good night... And you can tell me screwed up, but I'm going to If you have a good night, then you have a good day. But... If you have a bad day and then a good night, everything straightens but out. But how old was the mother? The mother was 35 years old. That part and got she weighed 120 pounds. Yeah, that part got edited out. 
Right. See, and you I, know the other most important issue. No, wait, wait, Abe. They, I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with the, how they're recording stuff here, but I, I, we didn't get any of that. Oh, you wanted the game? Yes, okay. yeah, please. The joke. Yes, okay. the joke. Yes. You know this ten year old, this ten year old boy says to his mother, "How old are you?" And she says, "It's not polite to ask a lady her age." Next day he says, "How much do you weigh?" And she says the same. It's not polite to ask. Next day he says, "Mother, why are you divorced?" And she says, "You see, yeah, we get older, we discuss it." A few days later, they both up together. Because I found my mother's driver's license and it gives me all the answers. It says that he's 35 years old, he weighs 120 pounds, and in fact, he's asking for money like, like, like that little bitty who is the And belt. the women who have in sex an A or a B, they never get the How could this guy be a multi millionaire? He obviously didn't make it yet. off it. So, that, that is one of the issues, but the other major issue that <laughs> He's gonna bothers <laughs> our nation and more than anything... Do you want to make him do it again? Yeah. Well, wait, 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 wait. We have opened a butcher shop, more butcher shops, then he bought a slaughterhouse, yeah. more slaughterhouse. Wait, I want to know what the hell is going on here. Why didn't we hear any of that? Well, I'm sorry, Abe, if, Abe, if, Abe if I'm yelling at me, people here. If you let me finish, you yeah, No, we didn't hear any of that story. No, no story that you hear from me, you heard from anybody. No, no, I could you tell us, up. we want to hear the story, and the mics keep going in and out. It's our new producer. Yeah. So what happened? Could you just tell the story about the boy and, and the woman? Again? Yes, please. Yes, this 10-year-old boy... Asks his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day, she says, how much do you weigh? And she gives the same answer. And the next day, he says, why are you divorced? And she says, you're too young. You'll get older. And we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together. And he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license. And it gives me all the answers. <laughs> it says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in sex, I don't get it. She got an F. No, an F and in with, sex. Uh, with an F in sex, they automatically get divorced. But those women I'm gonna who go are the, I'm gonna, an A or B in sex, I want to break down the joke. Forever. It kind of grows on you. Yeah. So now it's the other issue which which bothers us a lot. You um you wrote that joke. I made up every joke that Fabulous. you hear. You never I didn't have even hear it unless you hear it from me, and I have hundreds of them. You know, uh, is the mother divorced? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because she has in sex an F. An F. Oh. But so. doesn't he realize that's female? I beg your pardon? The, the F, isn't that for female? Yeah. The F is for female. I that's see, right. I see, I you see. Can only you can get an you know, M or an F, yeah. So what if she'd gotten an M? She'd be a man. If she got that, she would be a man. man. Yeah. Then what that would I, he say? That I didn't think of. Abe, I think the main problem here is we didn't hear all of the joke. That's why we're so confused. We get the first half, yeah. and then we don't get the second half. We started going in and out. I think we've got it fixed now. It's the submixer. And so, uh, should I repeat yes, it? Yes, please. One more time, please. Okay. This the, this the ten year old boy <laughs> asks his mother, How old are you? I can't take it. And she says, It's not polite to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day, he says, How much do you weigh? And she says the same thing It's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, uh, Mother, why are you divorced? And I'd love to meet this guy. Too young. You realize this guy used to go to dinners with, like, Robert Kennedy. And he really? Knows, yeah. Uh, now he's being dicked around by Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. Robert Kennedy's there going, could you uh, tell me the uh, joke again? <laughs> and, uh, Abe, you're such a great storyteller. Can you tell the one about the 10-year-old boy? Well, Mr. Kennedy, I, uh, I lay up the poor, you see, when I hear your joke. <laughs> Wait, and now you see the other issue is a much more interesting I one. We missed the, the end. Problem to oh, I'm sorry, we missed, Abe, we missed the end. Open the up in uh, Chicago and more butcher Hey, shop. just the last two lines of the joke. We missed the end. Which line? The last two. From the previous joke? Yes. 
Yes. The privilege. She's 35 years old. Yes. She weighs 120 pounds. 120. And in fact, she got an F. No, not that line. The line before. The line before that? Yes. The okay. previous line to that and then do the rest. Okay. Yeah, All right. like what was the third question? Right. Right. From the third question forward. It seems that you guys don't know what means in sex and F. <laughs> but unfortunately today that's what's happening a lot. We're happening with him. So uh, <laughs> the, the first line is the boy is asking his mother how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. So how does it start then off? He says, mother, how much do you weigh? And she but says also Abe? it's not polite to ask. How does the joke start off? The joke started yeah. off. That's a wonderful question. The yeah. joke started off when I was in jail. No, no. How does and the there joke... there many, many... Uh, we want to record it this time. Right. Could you say it? What should I say? Well, we want the joke again, but this time we want to record it, and we'll play it in a future show. Okay. Yes. You know, this uh, this 10-year-old boy <laughs> asks his mother, how old are you? And Why did you do that? It's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day, she says, Mother, how much do you weigh? And she also says, It's not polite to ask a lady her weight. Next day, he says, And why are you divorced, Mother? And she says, You're too young. You'll get all the Why is he calling in anyway? Do we ever find out? Do they say that the boys are not together? No problem. I want to move ahead. He's my mother doing his age material. And it gives me all the answers. I wish the boy was dead. <laughs> that she's 35 oh, years old. It. It she weighs 120 pounds. <laughs> and in fact, she got an head. <laughs> so that's natural that it leads to a divorce. Well, <laughs> Mr. Hirschfeld, a lot of people love the joke. In fact, uh, here's Nancy. She loves it. Nancy, go ahead. I can't remember when I laughed so hard. Do you I hear am that? Tears. I am in tears. <laughs> Mr. Hershman, you, know you, you, you people are so at the top of your game. Well, Mr. Okay. Hershman, not even funny. We can't take credit for <laughs> that's Mr. Hershman. He wrote that material. beautiful yeah. joke. Gilbert, you know, good go, but no, <laughs> these people. <laughs> By the way, you know that was Barbara Walters interview. Barbara Walters. Yes, go ahead, please. Baba Volters. Baba Volters. Baba Volters. President Clinton. <laughs> Baba Volters? Yeah, Baba yeah. Volters. Who is this? You know who she is. Who, what's her name? Barbara <laughs> Volters. <laughs> Baba Volters? Right. You know, I don't... Uh, who is she? You know, she's met. on every television show. And her, her, what's her name? Barbara <laughs> Volters. <laughs> She said she asked the president, she had the interview with Is president she on like Clinton. something, uh, Everyone Loves Raymond? What show is she on? Okay. So she interviewed President Clinton. <laughs> and she Who? said, Miss President Clinton. Who interviewed him? Barbara <laughs> Walters. <laughs> and she interviewed Clint Howard? No, President <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> You know, uh, you know. <laughs> she interviewed Bobby Vinton? No, President Clinton. <laughs> Who interviewed him? Barbara Walters interviewed President Clinton. Bobby Waters? Yeah. Yeah, Bobby Waters? Okay. <laughs> what? Who interviewed? <laughs> Who interviewed Harry, Harry Dean Stanton? <laughs> Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters interviewed who? Yeah. President Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Clemens? Mr. President. <laughs> How old are you? And she says, Mr. President. And wait, wait, what, 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 Mr. Mr. Who? Mr. President Clinton. <laughs> Is this a joke? Yes. Oh, and we better start so over. She and she start and over and tell the whole oh, joke. Okay. They talk, uh, they start talk over. about... Abe? Yes. Who, who, first of all, who was doing the interview? <laughs> Barbara. Ba Barbara Walters. You like my accent? Yeah, no, I let's uh, do the joke about Barbara Walters. And she interviewed him and she said... She was interviewing a 10-year-old? 
<laughs> no, come on. Let's get the jokes because I want to get it on tape. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, continue. And they spoke about wait, 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 the world that and so on. Then she says, Mr. President, we were told Mr. by Presley? Paula Jones. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, she was interviewing Elvis Presley? Abe! Yeah. So she, you said Mr. Presley. <laughs> so she, Barbara Walters was interviewing Elvis Presley? No, no, President <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> Who was interviewing President Clinton? <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> was it Barbara Wa Waters? Yeah. Bobby Waters. Barbara Waters. Okay, let me be Bobby Waters. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen. What but, is it, but, Mr. Mr. Hirschfeld? Yeah. You say you have a diet that will change the world. You right. also say you have a plan for rebuilding the World Trade Center. Right. Well, I know it's Barbara Walters looks thinner. <laughs> yes. So... Anyway, right, why don't we do this? We've got the two jokes on tape. Mm -hmm. But just the second one is on head. We never we finished the second joke. We never finished the second joke. Only one more minute. Oh, okay, yes. Start, right, over. Start, start over. over. Start, start from the beginning. Let me finish. Go ahead. So, so the president, and they spoke about the world. Come on, get him a afterwards. And then she they said, Mr. They President, about you were told by Paula Jones <laughs> that you have a very, very small penis. <laughs> and the president says, honey, honey, believe me, it's only because she has a very, very big mouth. All right, look, i got, I got to wrap up moat? this segment. Um, Mr. We're Hirschman, out of time. We're out of time. I can give you the By the way, of the best jokes that were never told because all these jokes I composed in the two years. I, I like I was the one jail. about the ten-year-old boy. But let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I like the one about the ten-year-old boy. But the thing about Bill Clinton was he was not into peanuts. That was Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know Jimmy Carter. I knew personally, but I didn't. He had see peanuts. It. I didn't. And see And why peanuts. would Bobby Vinton? Be interviewing Clinton. Yeah, Bobby Vinton was a singer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't the Wick Clinton dead? <laughs> All right, look, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yeah. You can we... call me Abe or whatever. No, I, out of respect. I have respect for all the people. <laughs> Let me uh, say thank you, number one, for the yeah. interview. Number and two. number two, we want to hear the joke about the 10 year old boy. Uh, again? Yes, yes please. Yes, please. <laughs> I tell you what, from now on, I'm going to charge for it. <laughs> So the, the ten year old boy says, Mother, how old are you? And she says, It's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day he says, How much do you weigh? And she says the same thing. It's not polite to ask a lady her, her weight. <laughs> Next day he says, Mother, why are you divorced? And she says, Son, and she says, Son, you're too young, you'll get older, we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, Boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me... You should have Dracula Godfrey interview him about okay. his plans for the World Trade Center. 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in fact, she got an F. Sometimes... Hey, um, Dracula Godfrey, I know you want to know about uh, Mr. Hirschfeld's plans for the World Trade Center. Go ahead. My plan about this, you see, as a builder, you know, your plans for the World Trade Center. Right. Tell me now how you plan on building the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center. <laughs> you know what you remind me the way Joey Adams introduced me when he roasted me. <laughs> Joey Adam roasted me at the Friars Club. How's he doing? How is he? Wait, wait, How we want to get a joke. How is Joey Adams? And he said, I want you to meet a good friend of mine, Abe Hirschfeld, who is in this country maybe 50 years, but he still speaks like he's arriving next Thursday. That's wait, good. Wait, what was this joke again? I can't hear a thing on these new mics. So maybe I should buy you old mics. Yeah, yeah. All right, Mr. Hirschfeld, listen. That's Dracula Godfrey. It's the um, same thing. An old penis and a good one is better than a new one and a bad one.
Well, Mr. Hirschfeld, That's true. I am. Is that a joke? I don't know, Mr. Hirschfeld. You are, you are, you are, you are a, Mr. Hirschfeld. You are a huge success. You have made. Uh, even though you went to jail, you still have your millions. And yes. your sense of humor. And your sense of humor. You're a good sport. But and, I have, I have such fantastic jokes. If you what was that Joey them, Adams one? If you let me tell them. You'll be the ten times bigger at this station than it is now. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yes. Uh, at a future date, I'd like to hear your plans for the World Trade Center and also your plans for a hey, diet. Diet, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Hirschfeld. And uh, anything you're plugging? Do you need to plug something? Yes. Go ahead. I need to plug the problem what faces the nation. It's I'll... the world's problem. I'll be there all week. <laughs> Buy tickets now. <laughs> what is the world's problem? I'll be working this weekend I... at the World Trade Center. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Hirschfeld, quickly tell us what is the world's problem. There's a lunatic in my studio. The world's problem is, the world's problem is that uh, this butcher opened the butcher shop. And... <laughs> Oh, listen, and I gotta go. He bought lot of houses and became immensely wealthy. <laughs> and his son graduated in, in, in Harvard as the highest scholar. And when he came home, he says, Dad, I don't know what to do. I graduated, I graduated Harvard. I don't know what to do. So Dad says, Why don't you join me in my business? So he shows him all his businesses. Then he shows him a machine. He uh, says, this is a machine that nobody has on the Wii. Uh, I got to get out of We this. put the cow at one end, and the machine kills the cow, and it separates uh, the parts okay. and everything, and it packs it in packages, and whatever. What is going on? I don't know. I want to go home. Come out on the other side. All right. He says, Dad, if you had a machine where we put in a sausage on one side, and the cow comes out on the other side, you got yourself a partner. There you and go. that said, we have a machine like this too. He says, really, where is it? He says, son, your mother at home. Right. Mr. Hirschfeld, thank you, and we hope to speak to you in the future. Thank you. Very good, and I'm looking forward. Bye-bye. Regards to everybody. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Abe Hirschfeld, everyone. I will be at Captain's Funnies all this <laughs> week in New Jersey. Let me tell you. There's a guy who does a couple of jokes. <laughs> wow. Right. 500. Gilbert Godfrey tomorrow night at Caroline's in Manhattan for ticket reservations, 212-757-4100. And Gilbert will be at the Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey on February 28th. For tickets, go to Ticketmaster.com. i got to take a break, and then we do the news. Gilbert uh, Godfrey is here uh, live from the Hollywood Square. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know the first line out of Gilbert's mouth tomorrow at Caroline's is going to be, so there's this 10-year-old boy. <laughs> you steal Mr. Hirschfeld's joke. I know you. he got a wealth of material. <laughs> Tonight on E, Stump the Bowie. Bowie wins, and his opponent's sister has to get naked. It's a sexy new twist to name that tune. Plus, bonus footage of a hot Playboy photo shoot with our own Artie as the photographer. Don't miss this a jam-packed episode <laughs> yeah. tonight on the E. Hey now. Right after these words, the news. Stuttering John with Sean Lennon. Hi, Sean. How are you? Yeah, Look at Howard Stern. What? What do you think of Howard Stern? What do I think of him? Yeah. Uh, I don't think too much, you know. You watch the show? No, well, I don't watch too much TV. You know, I don't watch too much TV. Yeah, do you listen yeah. to the show? Um, I don't listen to radio. How are you? How are you? How are you? Let's make it feel at home. Kids, follow me. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, you know, um, the guy who sued Leona Helmsley got $11 million claims to be on the phone. I don't even know if it's the real guy. Are you the real dude? Hey, Howard. It's not him. No. <laughs> Tough guy thing. Sound like dice. Yeah. Hey, Howard, I'm a thing. <laughs> oh, I like dice over here. What is it, Bob? Yeah. This is Bob. I was watching CNN on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Leona Hemsley that was reported to have to pay $11.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> to some faggot. 
All right, let's uh, do the news, Robin. It's time right. for you. What is this guy's point? Is he... I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I can't even hear him. Gilbert's laughing so loud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gilbert at uh, Caroline's in Manhattan. Uh, for tickets, 212-757-4100. I know some people flying in from out of town for this show. <laughs> <laughs> All of New York's hotels are jammed. Yeah. yeah. So try and get tickets quick. They're closing off certain streets. <laughs> people are riding bikes to the show. How many seats are left in Camden at that college? <laughs> you can't get there either. Camden County College. In They're already lining up. <laughs> you know, I forgot about Camden. <laughs> yeah. You're going to play the college? How many seats? I have no idea. No idea. You no. just go. Yeah. Flat fee you get? Yeah. Doesn't matter who goes. Yeah. yeah. Who books these things for you? Do you do this yourself or oh, do you no. have someone? No. no. Yeah. He wouldn't pay an agent. Yeah. <laughs> you have to give him a whole 10%. <laughs> now, you're smart. You're beating the system. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He pockets the whole thing. Right. All right, Robin, go ahead. All right. That's it. Thank you. Over like I'm singing. That's right. I'm convinced you are. She is. She's dancing on a table. All right, Robin, let's hear it. She's wearing a banana skirt. <laughs> dancing on a table. Just call me Josephine. Yes. Um, I've never had any reason or seen any reason to go into a chat room, but this might have been one that I wanted to sit in on. An Arizona man took an overdose of prescription drugs last month while online in an internet chat room. Yes, and people cheered him on. Those who were chatting with him watched as his webcam recorded him passing out. The Arizona Republic, the newspapers, reporting that some of them actually encouraged the guy to take more pills. Because nobody thinks he's for real. Others urged him to get help. However, no one was able to get uh, help for him because he had given a fake number when he signed into the chat room. They didn't know where he was. Right. So they watched, taunted, or tried to help him. Yeah, it's all their fault. Uh, while he was doing it. The family is outraged because I guess oh. they've seen footage of They're outraged. what was recorded no. and some of the comments that were made while this guy was dying online. Could you sing that song again? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am, Abe eh? Hirschfeld? <laughs> yeah, he wants to record it. I certainly... Something was wrong with the tape. <laughs> go, Robin, go! Uh. <laughs> uh, a merciful ending was announced for <laughs> Dawson's Creek. I had it's stopped now watching it. Unwatchable. It's yeah. Absolutely unwatchable. It was so good before. It was. Yeah. It started out Gilbert so was, good. It yes. was a big fan. <laughs> wow, it was a brilliant show. Well, I happen to have watched it yeah. in the beginning and I wised up. They're uh, actually going to have a two hour finale, but who cares? No one. It's wrapped up, believe us. Gilbert Godfrey's girlfriend's a big fan. So. <laughs> She'll be watching the two-hour yeah. show. It's either that or look at Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> two hours. One of those dudes that was kicked off The Bachelorette has uh, bigger problems. He was arrested and charged at Kennedy Airport with trying to smuggle drugs onto his L.A.-bound flight last week. <laughs> I think that that's not accurate. I think the guy had two things of coding, uh, non-prescription. I mean, it was like personal use stuff, wasn't it? Really? It doesn't tell me what he... I thought it was pot. It wasn't? I thought it was uh, coding, but he didn't have a doctor's prescription oh, for it. If you can't take coding on a plane, let me know right now. Mm. You can't get coding non-prescription. Yeah, so I think he had. Uh, he didn't have a doctor's prescription, so they're saying that he had the illegal substance. But it didn't sound like he was any drug. I think they made it sound in the paper like the dude was yeah, a drug Yeah, it sounded dealer. like he was, you know, using this uh, yeah. to make a living. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought. He was a dealer who made it on the show. I said he's a pretty crummy dealer because judging from the size of his apartment in Manhattan, I said, man, he's not doing too well. <laughs> Actually showed some initiative. Yeah. <laughs> well, trust to get out of that place. He lost Trista. He didn't have a big apartment. He just tried to deal a little coding. His line should have been, I'm a drug lord, Trista. <laughs> also, an update on Paula Poundstone. You want to know how her uh, situation is going? Yeah, uh, Gilbert's a big fan of her. What are you, a lesbo? <laughs> but uh, with that suit. Did she ever say she's a lesbo? No, she says she's Burt Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> A judge in they Eastern... search Paul Poundstone's victim, <laughs> much like they searched mine, a judge looking in... for little boys in lasagna. <laughs> uh, little boys in Paul Poundstone? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. A judge, using the terms of the probation <laughs> the uh, comedian is facing, uh, he's cutting her psychological counseling sessions from four to two a month. 
I guess she started wearing a dress. And her <laughs> AA meetings from three to two a week. Got it all under control. <laughs> oh, okay. And her neckties are much more feminine now. <laughs> she had to plead no contest to a child endangerment and got her three adopted kids back in December. Hey, Paul, if you lose the zoot suit, you can cut it down to one a week. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we'll knock off all the meetings. <laughs> we were talking about Phil Spector earlier. He has hired O.J.'s former attorney, Robert Shapiro. Because he's real good at getting off guilty people. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that smack of guilty? I see if a guy hires Robert Shapiro, he's guilty. <laughs> if you need the dream team, you're probably guilty. Right. I plead the fifth. We <laughs> hire them when there's, your blood is on the victim. <laughs> That's right. So uh, they've also called in that Michael Botten, who's the uh, forensic scientist, to uh, oversee the autopsy that's being conducted on this woman who was found in Spectre's home. Apparently, he just met her on Sunday when he went to the uh, House of Blues out in Los Angeles. She was a waitress there. Uh, nobody who knows Spectre thinks they had any kind of long-term relationship. And nobody is giving any information as to what they think happened in that house. But Shapiro has launched one theory suggesting there might have been someone else in his sprawling estate that night. There you Even go. With a glove. Yeah. With a glove. Right. It was Mark Furman. Uh, Robert Shapiro says that he's going to try and get the same exact jury they use in the OJ trial. <laughs> What's that jury doing? Yeah, those people were terrific. <laughs> Johnny Cochran's working on poems now. That's true. <laughs> Saddam Hussein has uh, given his first interview to a Western journalist in 12 years. And that will be aired on 60 Minutes 2 tonight. Here we can hear a little bit of what Saddam has to say. He really? says that he is not a sponsor of A 10-year-old boy <laughs> was talking to a woman about sex education. <laughs> He says he's not a she sponsor. She got a divorce. All right, yeah. See, what he's he not says, a sponsor of terrorism, <laughs> but he applauds the work of Al Qaeda. If we had relations with the organization of Al Qaeda, we would not be ashamed to admit a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> Therefore, I would like to tell this we are with a ten-year-old boy. A ten-year-old boy is in sex like an F. He also says that uh, he is not stockpiling chemical or biological weapons. A thought. You, you know he's not saying it. The interpreter is saying it. <laughs> he's really saying. I'm to kill all you bastards. Buttons are not aspirin no, yeah. pills that one can hide in his pockets. And it's easy to work out if Iraq has weapons or does not have weapons. To solve the problems with the oil. It's not polite to ask a woman her age. Or about her biological weapons. I can rebuild the oil trade center. <laughs> and put you on a diet. Um, so anyway, the... Uh, um, UN is waiting to be addressed by Colin Powell. He might have even started speaking already. Right. He's to talk to them today to give them to lay out evidence as to why Saddam Hussein is a threat to the entire world. But uh, Richard Armitage, who's a Deputy Secretary of State, uh, says that uh, one senator wanted to know why so much attention is being given to Iraq over North Korea. B3. Our view, which some question is that we've given over 12 years of time to try to resolve. Uh, he sounds like Mr. Cunningham from Happy Days. <laughs> uh, the situation with Iraq, and we've been... Hey, Patsy! Uh, after finding out about the North hey, Korean... what is it, Mr. C? ...cheating on their 1994 agreement, we've only had a few... Yay, I didn't cheat on my 1994 agreement. <laughs> Chachi did. You hear Colin Powell's opening his uh, speech with a joke? <laughs> a ten-year-old boy. I remember when Joy Adams introduced me. <laughs> yeah, he's going to use that introduction. Saddam Hussein is talking to Barbara Walter. <laughs> So anyway, we will see. Uh, they say he probably won't convince the world of anything because he's not presenting any kind of smoking gun evidence. Uh, he will be showing surveillance photos of what the United States thinks are large caches of uh, biological weapons or plants that produce them. I think I look like Phil Spector. Oh, <laughs> get over yourself. Come on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just lay out the United States case. Meanwhile, the investigation into the disaster that was the Space Shuttle Columbia continues. Yesterday, there was a memorial service for the family and the workers in the uh, space 
program. Here's June Scobie uh, Rogers, who was the wife of a Challenger commander. Challenger also disappeared from space. She says her husband, Dick Scobie, died aboard Space uh, Shuttle Challenger in 1986, and it's difficult to be at the Johnson Space Center before. It took my breath for a moment uh, because I had so many fond memories of being here, and then uh, just it reminds me quickly that I'm without my soulmate, Dick Scobie, who I love so much. So. She was reminded of what she lost. Meanwhile, they're talking to people. One thing good about Gilbert, he can't lose anything. He has nothing. <laughs> That's right. There's no people in his life. He basically doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they've t they're talking to people, and we're hearing now the 911 calls from people who saw the Challenger breaking apart. This caller didn't know what had happened, but felt a vibration and saw the Columbia coming apart in the skies over Texas. B1. We just saw something very strange in the sky, almost directly above Nacogdoches. Uh, almost looks like a plane. Uh, might have blown. Probably like, if it's above in the sky, what do you want me to do about it, buddy? <laughs> but can Hold you up, imagine buddy. getting this call from this guy with that accent? Yeah. You go, oh, another kook. Yeah, I'm hanging up. <laughs> I, 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 a lot of times, so 911 won't respond. People sound like they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in the sky and need to do something about it. I it think it's like a plane, but yeah. it just fell apart. This uh, caller knew the shuttle Columbia had exploded, but in her grief, got the name wrong. B2. I know there's nothing you can do about it. But the Challenger was coming in this morning, and it blew up. It always comes right in over our driveway out here on 343. Yes, ma'am. And it blew up. I don't know. Help, but it, it, I understand, ma'am. Okay, well, that's what we think we heard. Mm. Yeah, so she was still calling it Challenger, even though that was Columbia that was blowing up. They are now saying that the path of destruction was a lot wider, and uh, debris started falling to the earth and earlier, and uh, probably over California, and they think that'll be very important to collect that debris to find out more about what happened to that aircraft. Thank God Gilbert's safe. Spacecraft. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, oh, yesterday they uh, announced the final two plants for the World Trade Center, the rebuilding down there. Yes. And I don't quite understand what those things are. I don't think they're pretty. Are they buildings? I thought they were like, like they, they don't even look functional. No, they don't look like people can be in them. One of them looks like a Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what they were going for. Yeah. Well, I have a plan. Yeah. I want the uh, Royal Trade Center to look like Baba Voltage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what they're, they're planning to spend a lot of money on. They say they're going to be the tallest buildings, tallest buildings in the world, but I don't think people can be in those buildings. No. So uh, just silly looking plans to me. I don't think anybody really wants to be in those buildings. It doesn't matter whether they want to or not. They're going to be. <laughs> if I have anything Are to say about it. you going to go there? Yes. We'll I would. We'll see. All right. Put, we'll put something up there now. Uh, the cops want to look at this uh, Michael Jackson documentary. <laughs> Good. It's about time. <laughs> I mean, what's everyone doing? The, the, the guy likes to sleep with kids. He's admitting it. He... That's exactly what caught their attention. These are the prosecutors who were interested in... Uh, Probing the child sex probing abuse. Probing my rectum. No, your child sex <laughs> abuse charges, Michael. And uh, they now they, say they, they searched my rectum and found a little cap with a propeller on it. <laughs> touch my penis in the private area. <laughs> they say they would like to. No listen. one can touch my penis unless they're two years old. <laughs> Do you talk about sleeping with children? And uh, who with was young sleeping? Boy. I was wide awake. <laughs> a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> Must touch Michael Jackson's penis. <laughs> the head of Barbara District Attorney's Office said it will be. He got a nap. Documentary. For touching his penis. In which Jackson discusses One his One time Joey Adams was touching Michael Sleep Jackson's over. penis. The show airs tomorrow and night. He was. Uh, Michael Jackson. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, my goodness. We'll slow Gilbert down a little. Yeah, give him a pill. <laughs> Wait, do your song again before we. <laughs> we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> Oh, there are lots of healthy things we can do with our hands. Sure. Come on, Mr. McFeelick. Can you pound? Pound. Yeah. Gotta pound. Ooh. Other things we can think of doing with our hands. 
some healthy things. I'll probably come to well, one thing is cleaning up. After we've played with something. I never realized it was so close. Is it over yet? Show. Tonight on East, Stump the Buoy. And the guy's sister gets naked. Gilbert Godfrey, go see him at Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey. Camden County College. Great football team. February 28th, the tickets go to Ticketmaster.com. On Caroline's. Oh, yes. You forgot Caroline's? I was going to just do one and then do another one later, yeah. but he won't let that happen. <laughs> He's more interested Caroline's in tomorrow. tomorrow. Caroline's night. tomorrow yes. night. 757 yeah. area code. Um, All right, be on your guard, Gilbert. The officials who are trying to counter terrorism say that uh, we should be on alert for more and uh, more horrendous attacks than September 11th coming up. They feel that Al-Qaeda is awakening sleeper cells throughout the world to do uh, sequenced attacks. You know, not just one, but several, including possibly targeting well-known people for assassination. <laughs> Thank God I'm not well-known. <laughs> He's only on Hollywood Square. Yeah. Right. It's right. Gilbert maybe, and Martin Mull. Yeah. Maybe you're safe. <laughs> I will live forever. How'd you get back on Hollywood Squares? I thought that uh, Henry Winkler, the producer of Hollywood Squares, was kind of like, I, I want to get rid of all the old people. Yeah, this yeah. is H2, not yeah. the other no, one. I, I, I should thank everyone out there. They were all emailing and were writing they? letters. People yeah. wanted you? Yes, believe it or not. It was a groundswell of support. <laughs> Wow. Is and, that what and, Winkler told you? Yeah, and, and they couldn't get Liam Neeson <laughs> sent to square. <laughs> so you're the hot top. Well, I think you're good on this show. I love him on Hollywood. I think you're much better than Phyllis Diller. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd they dig her? Go ahead, Robin, please. All right, so anyway, uh, if you see anything suspicious, I suppose you should report it because we're expecting lots of attacks. I'll be on the lookout. Anticipation of an attack on Iraq. Uh, Russell Simmons is upset with Pepsi. He says that we should boycott Pepsi for uh, yo, 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 taking yo. <laughs> the endorsement from Ludacris and giving it to squeaky clean Ozzy Osbourne. Well, Ludacris's music is no more dangerous than Ozzy, so he happens to be right, Russell Simmons. That uh, uh, they I can't imagine terming Ozzy squeaky clean. He's not clean at all. I think he's uh, joking. He's saying, you know, if you're going to uh, let Ozzy Osbourne in a Pepsi commercial, why is it you can't allow Ludacris? <laughs> Maybe because his name is Ludacris. Maybe because nobody was buying Pepsi because of Ludacris. Yeah. And I nobody know. knows Ludacris. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, right. What about that argument that Ozzy's insanely more famous? Yes. <laughs> no, I think that Ludacris had an endorsement deal taken away from him. Because maybe it wasn't working out for them. No, no, I don't think they ever shot the commercial. I think there was complaints made about his image. Oh, oh really? See, that's what he's saying. Why is it that Ludacris's image would uh, force you to cancel? Well, because he's an outrageous guy and has sexy song lyrics? I mean, so does Ozzy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, yo, yo. You know. But Ozzy has this image now from his TV show as well as his rock and roll. So maybe Listen, people who love Ozzy don't know. One of the biggest uh, ironies is, is that they won't give Howard Stern a commercial, but uh, Gilbert Gottfried gets one. <laughs> At least Ludacris <laughs> had one taken away. And Gilbert Gottfried uses the C word in front of young children. <laughs> I've seen it myself. I go to schoolyards. Right. <laughs> you so, yell out. It's yes. the guy who exposes himself to people. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we are wondering what is going on with Courtney Love, she was arrested when her plane landed in London the other day for cursing at a flight attendant because they wouldn't let her personal nurse into business class when she was flying economy. Why she need a personal nurse? She's a young woman. They didn't say why she was traveling with a private nurse, but... Because she's crazy? She didn't yeah. have one. When you have a personal nurse, that's a big yeah. problem. Personal nurse. <laughs> I've heard of like a bodyguard, a personal nurse. My own nurse. In fact, the nurse is trying to cover her face when the photographers were taking pictures. Did you see that? Yeah, she didn't want to be seen with Courtney with her outrage. I mean, she's trying to cover Courtney's face. I guess that's what a personal nurse does. Well, Courtney's excuse is, yeah, I cussed at the lady, but my daughter says I have a potty mouth. And... You know what I'm thinking of doing? I'm thinking of hiring a nurse. How much would that cost me a year? <laughs> 20 grand. I mean, I would like that. Not much. Would you buy her a business class seat? Yes, I would treat her well, but I wouldn't mind traveling with a nurse. And she'll hold on to the drugs. Will they wipe yeah. you? Right. 
I want to wipe my yeah. yeah. You know, usually I'm a, too big a star. A person with a private nurse is about a hundred years old. Yeah, that, that's very odd. So personal I don't know what nurse. He's up to. She was pissed the personal nurse couldn't visit her up in uh, business class. And why did your nurse need to visit you during the flight? Aren't the flight attendants taking care of you? We're an enema. Cook. <laughs> an emergency enema. <laughs> Where's my nurse? Come on. <laughs> um, Colin Farrell, who is now a big star. He's in the movie The Recruit, which was number one at the box office this past weekend. Yeah, he's a year away from Hollywood Square. <laughs> Colin. I see Gilbert sticking his head into <laughs> Collins Square. I can't wait. Hi. Maybe that's Colin Farrell to block, please. Colin. <laughs> Maybe that's why Gilbert's wearing his new hairdo. It has to be Colin Farrell. Gary, tell Tom I can't meet with him today. I'll call him on the phone, and I promise I'll call him. He wants to get a hold of me. I've just talked for four and a half hours, and I'm very tired. <laughs> Colin does not want to really... He doesn't want to live in Los Angeles... Ever, and he explains why. A3. Oh, great. Because I don't get any work here. <laughs> oh, I know. There's too many weird people for him. Yeah. It's not real enough. The stuff that I travel in, you know, it's it, it's very much Hollywood. A lot of time. Yeah. Uh, He's a like normal guy. guy. <laughs> but, um, but so, I've, I've, I've no intention of living here. They took me lucky in. charms! <laughs> well, I want to hear what he's saying, why he can't live in Hollywood. In movie town, it's Hollywood, you know, and I'm, I happen to be an actor who's had, had a lot of success, thank God. Uh, so I'm going to be treated a certain way, and I'm going to, uh, my path is going to be greased, and life's going to be made very easy for me, and that's all well and good. And I come into town for three months, indulge a little bit, and, and the best thing for me to do is get the f*** home to where my family and friends are, you know? Oh, I see, because it'll, it'll ruin He's been treated too well. Yeah. Read between the lines. Yeah. Too many darkies. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you think he's saying? It's a little dark here. <laughs> Did you know the niggers <laughs> in Hollywood? <laughs> I could do it without them, you know. Who needs the, <laughs> who needs the collards? I don't want them coons following me around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Candace Bergen, uh, who <laughs> showed up this year. She's not a nigger, is she? <laughs> Alabama, <laughs> along with Reese Witherspoon. Here, Candace, that is now on DVD. You can get that in your local video store. Not the speech saw that movie, didn't they? <laughs> Candace Bergen on the difficult scene for her in Sweet Home Alabama. It's A1. difficult when them jungle bunnies are moving in Tallahassee. <laughs> For instance, the scene where I had to yell at Reese is not so easy to call, you know, America's sweetheart um, an ungrateful little bitch. I just tried not to back off of it. I don't care about Candace Bergen. I don't think she's a good actress. Yeah, really. When was she ever an actress? Oh, come on. She's been on a lot of movies. She's been in movies. That doesn't mean she's an actress. Well, I'm saying I don't think she's a good actress. That's you think she's an actress. Oh, she might think it. And Karen you, Culkin. You, you don't think uh, Murphy Brown was extraordinary? <laughs> no. <laughs> Witty and edgy. I think she was a very pretty girl. Yeah. I don't think she was that hot. She was flat. She needed implants. Well, now people would argue. And she has like, a lot of lines in her neck. <laughs> Like veiny, like a bird. <laughs> it's <laughs> better than having corns in your nail. Oh, stop. <laughs> she was very pretty. In her day. You. Damn it, Colin. Come on. <laughs> Karen Culkin, a kid. Post talking, a nigger. <laughs> oh, stop it. What's the matter with you? Yeah, Are you crazy? Nigger, nigger, yeah. nigger. You know anything with the N word? What's the matter with you? That's racist. Col I can't Carl. help it, Colin Farrell. Why are you saying that word? Yeah. It's a terrible word. <laughs> You know, once I guess enough. it's those damn Irish. <laughs> well, I know you're trying to do an Irish impression and, yes, sir. and disparage Colin Farrell, but it's enough already. <laughs> Point taken. Right. Karen oh. Culkin, who is a young man who Michael Jackson says he's with, <laughs> was that he could explain his film that is now on DVD, Igby Goes Down, A2. Oh, my God. How can you interview Kieran Culkin and not just say, what did you do in bed with Michael Jackson? Who cares about anything else? Absolutely. Like to see how the world around his father kind of crushed him, or at least through his eyes. Like, see how oh, oh Kieran. Structure. That, I, that's very nice, but what color penis does down. Michael Jackson have? So he'd be kind of sees... Did he bleach his, his testicles? His and sees that, that that's going to happen. <laughs> did he touch you? Yes. <laughs> Now, his testicles are the dark light. Could you please fill us in on this? <laughs> Anything else, Robin? That's what's happening. Well, what a pleasure to have Gilbert Gottfried here. Really. Yeah. Even when he becomes a little racist. <laughs>
Well, it's that damn Colin Farrell. Yeah, what's, yeah. With, what's with that Colin Farrell? Yeah. I know he's trying to be funny, but yeah. he appeared to be very racist in his humor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See Gilbert Gottfried tomorrow night at Caroline's in Manhattan for ticket reservations. I wonder if he'll be doing that at Caroline's. Now, if there's any black people in the audience, 212-757-4100. Gilbert will be at the Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey. Here's my impression of Colin Farrell at the mid <laughs> And go see him February 28th at the college, <laughs> Ticketmaster.com. At Camden College, Gilbert's considered a professor. <laughs> this is Colin Farrell at a rap concert. <laughs> well, we'll see you tomorrow. We have a big day. By the way, if there are any girls who want to have hot lesbian sex with Tabitha Stevens, we can set that up. We're going to do a dating game with her. I'm not kidding, for real. 1-800-44-STERN. If you're one of the three women we select, you can have hot lesbian sex. Or if you'd like to have gay sex with Colin Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> if you're white, the number is... 1-800-44-STERN is the number to call for Tabitha Stevens. I don't know where you call for Colin Farrell. Uh, you don't call anywhere for that. All right, we'll uh, see you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Get set for the awards. People are scrambling to their seats because you don't want to miss the show. The 29th Annual FME Awards with Howard Stern. 95X. We're in the middle of the 2003 Howard Stern FME Awards. What the in hell? ceremonies held earlier, the FME for the best defense of a pedophile rapist went to Quentin Tarantino. Stay tuned for more categories and more winners as the 2003 Howard Stern F. Emmy Awards continue. Only on the Howard Stern Show. All right, I've got one final category. Just let me tell you that uh, our audience is in a frenzy. They love the F. Emmys. They can't believe they're almost over. Yeah, they want more. Look who's in the audience. American Idol Ruben Stuttered. And everybody's favorite racist, Daniel Carver. And later in the show, they'll be singing Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> that I like. During rehearsals, Daniel Carver of the Ku Klux Klan slipped occasionally and used the N-word, which was very upsetting to everybody. <laughs> in our audience, there are 15 bald children wearing the F. Imus baseball cap. They are all escaped cancer kids from the Imus Ranch. Each year, we try to do a rescue of animal rescue, we do a cancer kid rescue, and we bring them to the FMEs. Yeah. Nick DiPaolo is in our audience. Hi, Nick. Nick's going to try and uh, do a little monologue for us. All right. Coming up on the stage. <laughs> sure, Nick, come on up. We want to laugh, too. Uh, Tyrone and Leroy Spielberg are here. Steven Spielberg's black sons. Uh, Tyrone and Leroy? Yes. According to reports, they've asked their dad to buy them something very special for Hanukkah this year, the Olsen twins. Isn't that right? Well, he's got the money to do it. Here's Christopher Reeve, and uh, giving him a lap dance is Barbara Walters. Poor and Chris. That's Chris trying to give the thumbs up sign. We'll be back in 20 minutes when he gets that thumb up. <laughs> Great stuff. You know, uh... Look at Nick DiPaolo moving slow, trying to get up here. Where is he? <laughs> All right, here's my next category. I guess nobody listens out there. I, they don't get the joke. you got to be more. Bring in Nick. Bring in Nick. He's, he's in a bathroom. Oh, well, well, let me know. I mean, you know. I didn't know. I, right. knew, I was get telling out. he was here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're <laughs> annoying me. Go take more pills. Our category, Best Effing with a Guest. Our first nominee is Abe Hirschfield. Gilbert Gottfried makes Abe repeat the same j joke over and over and over again. You know, this 10-year-old boy says to his mother, how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. The mics aren't working at all here. Can you just do that again? Yes. Yeah. This ten-year-old boy is asking his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she says, also, it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, why are you... How many times can you get him to say this? He says, you're too young. You'll get older. We'll discuss it. No, you... wait, wait, Abe. 
They, I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with how they're recording stuff here. But I, I, we didn't get any of that. Oh, you wanted the game? Yes, okay. yeah, please. The joke. Yes, okay. the joke. Yes. You know, this yeah, ten-year-old ten boy says to his mother, how old are no. you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Let's <laughs> say she's the law the house, yeah. boss, law the house. I, I want to know what the hell is going on here. Why didn't we hear any of that? Well, I'm sorry, Abe, hear, Abe, if, Abe if I'm yelling at people here. If you're not finished, you're yeah, here. No, we didn't hear any of that story. So what happened? Could you just tell the story about the boy and, and the woman? Again? Yes, please. Yes, this 10-year-old boy asks his mother, how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day, how much do you weigh? Abe, I think the main problem here is we didn't hear all of the joke. That's why we're so confused. We get the first half, yeah. and then we don't get the second half. We started going in and out. I think we've got it fixed now. It's the submixer. And so, uh, should I repeat yes, it? Yes, please. One more time, please. Okay. This the this the ten year old boy asks his mother how old are you? I can't take it. And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. That is That's great. great. <clears throat> Never fails to. In the category best effing with a guest, Anna Nicole Smith, Stuttering John, goads Anna Nicole Smith, and. Keeps begging her to get on the scale and weigh herself. And just get on the scale. We all have bets. Stop being so. It doesn't matter. We've all been on the scale. No. I'll get on it. Just get on the scale. That's enough. It's, it's good for the show. Easy, just yeah. want to do it. Benji, what are you yeah. saying? Yeah. Wait a second. What do you want to do, John? Just, just cut the hell out. Just get on the scale. It's no, no big deal. He doesn't want to do it. What are you, a moron, yeah, Benji? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. You want to fight about it? I'll yeah, bet a thousand dollars that you're over two thirty. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, keep your thousand dollars and go out and buy your f***ing drink. All right. That's right, baby. <laughs> what do I have to do to tell y'all, f*** no? I'm no way. No. Okay, all right. Just trying. I don't know why you're using the F word. Because that guy over there is an asshole. Oh, oh John? This will be my last visit. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. I'm not letting you out of here, then. It's can I just say one last thing, and I'm sorry about before? Mm -hmm. And is there any chance we can get in scale just one oh. time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take this microphone and swing around and beat it on your f***ing head. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. Love it. That's going to be my last appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Yeah, she hasn't been back. <laughs> All right, our next nominee is Bernie Capel. I interview Bernie, and I use the same questions Kane and Cabby used to interview Pearl Jam. <laughs> Great Bernie Capel, uh, so much to talk to you about. Uh, I guess the first question is, what are you thinking about and caring about right now? Because I know you are uh, big into a lot of causes, and you've got a lot going on in your head the way it seems. Uh, you're a thinker, so what worries you right now? Well, I, I'm uh, I'm in a different place of worrying. I'm 69 years old. I just had my second child five weeks ago, my second boy. We have people coming to our website with questions. Jurgen of Randolph, New Jersey, asks a question. He says, John Lennon once said, my role in society or any poet or artist is to express how we all feel, not as a teacher or preacher, but as a reflection of us all. Does Bernie Coppell agree with that statement? And if you do, what are you expressing to us? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm expressing different things. I'm, I'm in my, my places with, with these babies now and being not, not uh, sitting on them too much. And now you put peanut butter on your leg to get your dog to lick because mine doesn't just come up and lick me unless I put something there. No? <laughs> I mean, between your toes. I'm well, sorry. My, my life used to be, you know, I used to be so busy with, with dogs, and now I'm, I'm busy with kids. Sebastian, a listener of Newark, says, what are your feelings on the recent death of Lane Staley? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Lane Staley. <laughs> that was such a dumb bet. <laughs> I like it. Nick, how do you like the FME so far? I see you're out of the bathroom now. Yes, uh, I was listening to him on the uh, toilet. Right. <laughs> it's a horrible failing. You're calling me in. I'm... Let's see who wins. Okay, that's what him? I thought. The winner again, Abe Hirschfeld. Oh, nice. That was a great call. And Gilbert should be awarded something. Good. Yeah, but, 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 unfortunately, Gilbert's in the mental institution. Oh. Right <laughs> Mr. Hirschfeld, congratulations on winning the FME yet again. Thank you, and I'm uh, very honored and very happy. You know, at my age, 
Would you like to make some... Knowing what I know, we are in all the problems now, which we shouldn't have been, but I still can change it. Would you like to make a speech to accept the FME? Yes, and I think I deserved it. I made... Uh... Wait a second. In three, two, one... Go ahead. I accept. I, I I really deserve it on all the accomplishments. Should I do I this? My life. Yes. yes. All right. Give it a shot. The creator Tribeca rebuilt Lower Manhattan. Okay. Now, well, hold, Mr. Hirschfeld and Mr. Hirschfeld, Mr. Hirschfeld, when the mics go on in three, two, one, and start your acceptance speech. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead and three, two, one, go. Yeah, I'm very, very honored to accept this. Especially after all the accomplishments that I made, I, I rebuilt the Yankee Stadium <laughs> really, 20 it. years ago, it. and it has to be done again, and, right. and I will be glad to do it. And I can build the Coliseum in no time, and I have created Mr. Hirschfeld. Tribeca. Mr. Hirschfeld. Yes. You are a great man, and I always love when you're on the show. We are experiencing a technical problem. Our satellite has crashed. And I'm going to ask you to wait one second before we okay. get the satellite back up. And then once the satellite is up, I would ask you to make your acceptance speech. Okay. In three, two, one, go. I'm making my accept. Uh, uh, thank you for <laughs> giving me the great honor. And I must tell you. We need Gilbert. I'm sorry about <laughs> President Clinton. Barbara Walters once came to visit him. If he has a story, and they you know, like you love his uh, anecdotes. I think he's in the middle of one. issues and economy and everything no, else. And she says, <laughs> Mr. President, no, listen, we listen. were told by Paula Jones that you have a very, very See? small penis. Now we can go back and ask him. Joe, the again. president says, honey, Barbara. Mr. I Mr. I Mr. Hirschfeld, Mr. Yeah. Hirschfeld, please uh, start from the story about the president. But do not use the word penis. We can't put that on the air because so what of the... What should I use instead? What word do you like? Would you like to use the word schmuck? Okay. All right. Use the word schmuck and uh, I'll hold it for our satellite audience. Hold on. Okay. Three, two, one. You're on, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yeah. Barbara Walters came to visit President Clinton. He's going to say schmuck. <laughs> and they talked about the economy and political and the <laughs> war. And then she said to him, Mr. President. We were told by Paula. We were told by Paula Jones that you have a very, very small schmuck. <laughs> and the president, uh, Ms. Mr. Barbara, Hirschfeld, Barbara, Mr. Hirschfeld, I just checked, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yeah. I just checked with my general manager. They've approved the word penis. If you would like to use that instead of the word schmuck, it is funnier. Okay. All right. Let's begin the story. In three, two, one, go. Barbara Walters came to visit President Clinton, <laughs> and they discussed it about the problems with the juvenile delinquency and all the problems that we are facing. I think I've had enough of that. I could do it for an hour. Funny. And I should tell him to say, all right, I'll tell him to say, ramalama ding dong <laughs> instead of uh, penis. Paula Jones said you have a very, very small penis. Oh, and honey, Barbara, oh, honey. I don't get Believe it. me, it's only because she has a very, very big mouth. Mr. Hirschfeld, you've won the FME. Congratulations and thank you. But uh, I, I might ask a favor of you. Yes. The story is fabulous about uh, Clinton. Um, uh, they said okay to the penis thing. I'm afraid when this re-airs, they're going to bleep the word penis. Would you mind telling the same story just one last time using the word ramalama ding dong for penis? I think you'd get a good laugh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. In three, two, one, go. Yeah, Barbara Walters came to visit <laughs> President Clinton, and they spoke about the economy, about the problems. When he said, when he said Ramalama Ding Dong, I'm going to faint. And then she says, Mr. President, we were told by Paula Jones. I could do this all day, but I won't. You wouldn't. have a very funny, bum, 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 very small one. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Honey, Barbara, Mr. Uh, Hirschfeld, Mr. Hirschfeld, the word Rama Lama Ding Dong. Okay. Rama Lama Ding Dong. Okay. All right, all right. Three, two, one, go. From the beginning? Yes. Yeah, Barbara Walters came In to... In three, two, one, go. Rama Lama Ding Dong. Go ahead. Three, two, one, go. And Barbara Walters came to visit President... Isn't he Clinton. like a millionaire? They yeah. discussed about the problem. How come he's got millions? we have now with juvenile delinquents. Parking with, lots. How old with is he? With the youth growing he's and like coming. He's like 80-something. And all the problems. We look, we're going to look forward to it. Now in the economy. <laughs> People and people watching you. Says, what if I Mr. told him to use President, his name, Nick DiPaolo, instead of President like Clinton? Paula oh, Jones, <laughs> that you have a very, very small Ramalama Ding Dong. <laughs> And the president says, honey, Barbara, honey, believe me. That's great. It's only because she has a very, very big poor, mouth. Poor bastard. Uh, is the name President Clinton 
uh, legally cleared? Yes. It is? Are you sure? Sure, because I was the one who bought Baba Walters. I was the one who offered him a million dollars. Yeah, but I'm just wondering... I'm uh, saying it's maybe hearsay because it's a third-person account. Would you mind using the name Nick DiPaolo instead of President Clinton and tell the same exact story? And no, I'll, I don't want to. You will not do it. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I have to I tell the truth, and that's not the only way I can go. Apparently, no, I will tell the audience that Nick DiPaolo means President Clinton. Okay. All right, let's go in three, two, one. Go ahead. What, the same thing again? Same thing again, except say Nick DiPaolo instead of President Clinton, if you don't mind. No, I don't want to. All right, under, fair enough. Here's my, my career life story. Yeah, well, I just thought, I think it'll clear, I'm not sure. But listen, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Hirschfeld, congratulations on your award. And you know what? I figured out, Howard, it's now before Christmas. Yes. That Jesus Christ could not have been Jewish. How did you figure that? You see, he went for the Last Supper. Had he been uh, Jewish, no. he would have gone for early bird specials. <laughs> What's up? Howard, I, I checked with the transmitter department. Oh, get out of here. I can't do this all day. All right. Uh, Mr. Hirschfeld, congratulations. Wait, to wait. You. Could you say that last joke again? Instead of Jewish, say Ramalama Ding Dong. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Three, two, one. Yeah, and I don't know. Ramalama Ding Dong. All right. Forget it. Mr. Hirschfeld, I got it all on tape. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Congratulations. All right. <laughs> That, that's just, that never gets old to me. Well, the man is gracious. He certainly loves to make a speech. Yes, and uh, He's got good as stories. I recall, it originally happened when he was in prison, right? That's correct. That was the best. It's that always the funny. Prison. Whatever his first words are out of the story are always the funniest. And the yes. first time you did it with Gilbert, it was Joey Adams. <laughs> <laughs> See Nick DiPaolo this Thursday through Sunday at the Comic Cafe in Buffalo, New York. This guy really knows how to tear up the house. <laughs> One of the best. Yeah. One of the best ever. Yeah. Go to nickdip.com. Me and Artie did Buffalo, uh, what, six months ago, Artie? We did. Me and Nick played a hotel in Buffalo at the going, airport. The Holiday Inn. Is Things are going the great. Is that time you cried, uh, Artie? No, I cried about a month later <laughs> in St. Louis. Not just the hotel. It was at the airport. You Nick, would... do you still love doing this? Do you still love going out there and telling your jokes? I and... like it while I'm on stage. Right. And I have, like, you know, ten rum and cokes in me. But <laughs> How's the marriage going? Not bad, actually. Your wife doesn't mind you on the road all the time? Uh, actually, she likes when I leave the house. She does. Yeah. It helps her out. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't realize what a miserable bastard she got, but she's actually booking me gigs that don't even exist. Huh? And you haven't cheated like Colin Quinn? Oh, no. I'm, no. I, I did all that a long time ago. All right. I'm tired. What about you? A week ago? Huh? A year ago? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> You're exhausted. There's a lot of diseases out there. Right. Uh, I spent more time at the free clinic in Atlanta than... Uh, <laughs> Howdy knows. I ran into him at the waiting room, one of those. What was the story? You were fighting with your wife, and you went to the bathroom on yourself? Well, I, no, I had... <laughs> oh boy, they really simplified that. Yeah. I had, I had the stomach flu about a month ago, and uh, I got in a fight with my wife one night, and I said, I'm out of here. It was a beautiful October night, so you know, I live up in Westchester, so I'm going for a walk, and... I walked about, you know, two miles. All of a sudden, I got these wicked stomach cramps. And I, if I took another step, I would have crapped my pants. Right. So I stood there, frozen, for literally like 20 minutes. Ended up scaling a stone wall. <laughs> and uh, it's and like you released? A, it's part of, like, the Rockefeller. You know how he owns everything up there? Yeah. It's, uh, the know, Rockefeller it's, estate. Yeah. I was up. So I climbed over. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I, I take my pants off, my socks, my underwear, my shoes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, and I'm trying to, you know, I had wicked diarrhea. I'm trying to decide whether I should use my socks for, you know, toilet paper or my underwear. And then I had, I had a nice T-shirt on, but the yeah. fireman gave it to me from 911. I didn't want, right, you don't want to ruin that. You can't wipe yeah, your, that would be wipe, disrespectful. Yeah, wiping your ass with it. Yeah. So, you know, I used my socks and my underwear. And, wow. Wow, came, that's terrible. Came home with no socks. and. Uh, Did you blame your wife because she's the reason you had to go for a cool-down walk? Of course. Right. Blame her for everything. we got to take a break. Who cleaned up after? What? Did she have to do the laundry? She cleaned oh, I, your no, socks? I left it. You left I, your socks? I left everything. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid right. there's going to be a cop knocking on my door in a couple of weeks going, we got your DNA, come with us. Nick, could you uh, repeat that story? Instead of crap, say schmuck. Uh, I <laughs> schmucked in my pants. <laughs> Nick DiPaolo will be with us for the news. We'll do that when we get back.